Hi, thank you so much for coming. My name is Jody Glickman. I'm the founder and CEO of Great on the Job, a communication training and leadership development firm, and I'm super excited to be here with you today. We're gonna to talk about how you can love your millennials so that they can be engaged and excited about their work and how you can harness the potential of all of the young people in your organization. So let me start and ask you a question. How many of you have ever worked for a boss you loved? Raise your hands. Okay, awesome, thank you. And what about a jerk? Present company excluded, how many of you have worked for a jerk? Okay, almost as many, I'm sorry to say. So who did you do better work for? The boss you love or the jerk? Of course, right, the boss you loved. And why did you do better work for a boss you loved? Because you were intrinsically motivated because you felt compelled, right, and committed to that person, because you were excited to go above and beyond for them, because they invested in you or had a personal relationship with you. We all do better work for someone we love. And none of you today would be sitting in this room if you weren't able to instill that kind of love and admiration and trust from your colleagues. You wouldn't become a leader of learners if you didn't know how to do that. So I spend all of my time thinking about how to help people communicate strategically, effectively, and persuasively at work, every day, in every situation. And Great on the Job is all about practical, tactical strategies, which we're gonna talk about today for loving your millennials. But I really think there's only one key thing you have to do in business to be successful in any organization and in anything you do, and that is make people love you in a totally professional, platonic, work-appropriate way, right? Because if I love you at work, what will I do for you? I will do anything and everything, right? I'll pay you well. I'll promote you. I'll give you that great opportunity abroad or put you on that high-profile project. I might mentor you or sponsor you. I'll do everything and anything in my power to help you get ahead. And so it's all about making people love you at work. And how do you do that, right, as a leader of learners? How can you think about instilling in your organization, giving young people and the millennials the tools they need so they're the person that their boss loves working with? I am a former investment banker who started my career as a Peace Corps volunteer. So not the likeliest of people who would ever stand up here today talking to you about how you can be great on the job or how you can make people love you at work. And the truth was I wasn't very good at my job as an investment banker. Merger math, not my thing. But the reason I was able to be successful, the reason I was able to go from the Peace Corps to Goldman Sachs, right, and to, from the White House to the EPA to then launching my own business was because that was the only thing I knew how to do was make people love me. So how do you do that? What do you do every day in your role right now? All of you sitting in this room, what do you do to make people love you at work? I think it comes down to four big high-level key themes. They're the only high-level themes that Great in the Job talks about ever, but they're the backdrop of everything that we do to help young people communicate effectively every day. And they are the gift of Great on the Job. Generosity, initiative, forward momentum, and transparency. And I would argue they're the backdrop of all effective professionals, all effective learners, and all effective leaders. So what does it mean to be generous at work? What do you do every day right now, you, to be generous? You share your time, right? You share your network. You share your expertise. You mentor young people in your organization. You share credit. You give people props when they do a great job. You walk in every day and you think about making your boss's life better or easier. That is the definition of generosity. You all do that every day. You know that intuitively, but that's what we think about when we're talking about giving millennials the skills they need to be successful. It's teaching them to be generous. And you're gonna see how we translate that into an online experience in a moment. Initiative, forward momentum. How many of you got to the role you're in today because you just sat at your desk and you put your head down and you did really good work? Anyone? 
Of course not. You took a ton of initiative to be where you are today. You focused on forward momentum, on moving the ball forward, and on being really transparent, right? Telling people exactly what you know, conceding what you don't know, and then going and getting the information. So generosity, initiative, forward momentum, transparency, they are the gift of great on the job. I think they are the secret to how you are gonna help your millennials be employees that are engaged and excited and people that you love. Last question, what's the cost of bad communication? Any ideas? Every disengaged employee is costing our economy $13,000 per year in lost productivity. And bad communication accounts for $26,000 per knowledge worker per year in lost revenue because of bad communication. Those numbers are astonishing. So, what are we doing to fix it? We are partnering with Pearson, right? The world's learning, leading learning company to think about how do we take the ideas of great on the job of giving people the tools and skills to put generosity, initiative, forward momentum and transparency into action every day in everything they do. So I am a small team of four. Great on the Job is a very small company. We've been doing what we do for eight years. We have an amazing client list of leading global investment banks, of all this country's top tier MBA programs, of undergraduate institutions, but we are really small. And we partnered with Pearson to take this content that has proven to be so effective and compelling. We have an 80 plus percentage um, client retention rate, right? Our clients love us, they really do, and they work with us over and over. But we weren't reaching people on the scale that we wanted to be reaching them. We had to crack this nut of how do you take this learning from an in-person experience and translate it to an online format, right, that is going to be far more impactful. And so why did we want to take it online? There were a few reasons. The first is scale, right? Reaching more learners where they are and going deeper into the content. Meeting millennials where they want to learn. Thinking about how can we make the content really consumable, right? fun to engage with, short, quick, easy to digest. That was hugely important. You're not gonna always have someone in the front of the room for two hours. Thinking about the stickiness of learning, everyone learns differently, and that was something that was really important to us to be able to bring in different forms of learning into the process. Um, social gamification, creating leaderboards, letting people interact with each other as they go through the experience and see where the learning is for different people. And it really was driven by consumer demand. We would go into a Fortune 100 company and we would do a training for 100 people and they would say, how do we roll this out to 1,000 or to 10,000? How do we get this message of generosity and initiative, forward momentum and transparency to our organization as a whole? So I really think that there is a virtuous cycle here. When you talk about disengaged employees and when you talk about young people who don't have the skills to communicate strategically, if you give them those skills, they're gonna be better at their job and they're gonna like their job more. It's a virtuous cycle. You're better at your job, you like your job more, and then you do better and you keep enjoying it more and you love the work that you're doing. So how do we teach this online? As I mentioned, we partnered with Pearson to create a best-in-class product where we really feel like learners can engage with the content at their own pace, on their own time, in a way that is really fun. So this is what it looks like. This is the hub. So you get to see that it's not sort of a traditional online course that you're used to seeing, right? But it's something where you can sort of dive in and hopefully feel like you're, um, you're excited to go to this place where you're gonna get really great strategies and tools so that you can be great at your job for your young learners. We piloted the program uh, this past summer as we were rolling it out. And as we thought about creating a pilot, we wanted to work with an existing client. We chose Abbott. They were very excited. They are a longtime client of Great on the Job. And just so you have a sense of the differences, right, in a normal, um, in a normal process, 
I'm in front of an audience of 150, 160 interns, and I'm talking to them for three hours about how they can incorporate the gift of great on the job and be those employees and summer interns and new hires that you love, that you want to retain and develop and promote. But it's always been a live audience, three hours, U.S. only. And with this online program now, we're able to reach so many more people. So we rolled out a pilot for 200 interns, totally self-directed on their own time. It was for a global audience, gave us the opportunity to reach learners in Europe, Latin America, and Asia, um, and have them be fully immersed. And then get a lot of data back, which could tell us what are they learning, how are they learning, where are the gaps, what do they need. And what we found, the data was incredibly compelling. So 68% of learners who went through the program and gave us data said that they would recommend this learning to their peers, which is incredibly high given where we are in the world of online learning and the data and statistics we have around usage and consumption. Um, but overwhelmingly, they enjoyed the experience and wanted to recommend it to their peers. Even better, 79% said they will use the strategies learned in this experience online going forward, which is huge. And finally, 89% said they are putting generosity initiative for momentum and transparency to work in their lives every day after going through this experience. This is how you start to think about a sea change of culture in an organization when all of your young hires, when your millennials, when your new learners are incorporating gift into their daily life. Some of the lessons that we learned as we went through the pilot. We needed to figure out what was the right amount of participation with the client. And that was a question we didn't ask in the beginning that we will be asking going forward always. What is the target that you're hoping when you launch a product online with your learners in your organization? Um, it was a little bit of a rush job in terms of many pilots are. Finishing the product, launching it, partnering with, our, uh, with Abbott, right? And we didn't think to give the entire L&D team access to the product before we launched the pilot. So we will never do that again. That was a huge piece of learning for us, but we needed those hiring managers and those mentors to be fully engaged with the content and know it and love it themselves. So that was something, it was an afterthought in this case, but that is, is a great piece of learning for us. Um, also thinking about how we can make it really useful to your managers and mentors and creating a coaching guide that can go along with the online product is something that came up is, that is very important and can be high value add to everyone in the organization, especially the learners and the managers. And then the last thing is we look at the data and how we measure results of this pilot, thinking about participation versus content consumption. And at the end, we wound up with about 40% participation from the summer interns, but we had very uh, strong numbers of people who really devoured the content and who got really high in the leaderboard and went deep and sent us comments about how they would pay for this kind of content were they to go for a conference, but here it was given that to them as a summer intern for free. So our key takeaway was that this content in an online forum was equally, if not more so, powerful when done in an online self-directed multimedia course as it was as when you deliver it live in front of 200 people in a two-hour training. And our aspiration going forward is that we can harness the power of millennials, all of their brilliance, all of their creativity, all of their passion and excitement by giving them the tools so that they can be better communicators so that they can commu communicate strategically, effectively, and persuasively every day in every situation. So I will leave you with one final thought that great on the job and Pearson, it is true love forever. It was an amazing experience to work with Pearson and build this out. And I'm really happy to have had the opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you.